talk about the basket quilt and some of the details. We're going to talk about value. Um, and I do, I do have some questions that I want to go over before we, um, before we get going on that and some show and tell. I love that you guys are accessing the forum. That makes me very, very happy. So, um, my daughter, you know, how she got in on the thing, uh, Wednesday, well, last yesterday I was on another Zoom meeting and boy, she creeped by the glass door like a little church mouse because she did not she didn't know who I was talking to and she didn't want to get on. But um, I shared with you that she is a high school librarian now. She's getting her master's so that she can do this. She is a certified teacher and she has gone from junior high to high school. And it's been really fun because a lot of the kids she had as students in junior high, you know, are now at the high school. But she also then has the two little ones underfoot at home, of which one is in kindergarten, Lennox. And so I just laughed when I saw this, when you're talking about Zoom meetings. Online class elementary versus high school. Uh, I just give you a second. And it was funny because Lennox had her cat, see the one that says, my dog is here. And her teacher, uh, they just love, goes, I, your cat is beautiful. Now put it down. <laughs> You're not supposed to eat now and blah, blah, blah. So I this, this has stuck with me. So I went back and found it to share it with you since my daughter said hi. And then I put this on my daughter's Facebook page about a week ago. <clears throat> You you are. <laughs> Through all of this, we've got to find some humor, right? So I'm going to show you some quilts. I went to the a forum, and again, it, you go to the forum, go to recent topics, and look at finished cave quilts. And I I've said this before, and I'm not blowing smoke. I am so amazed at what you guys are doing. Um, I don't want to say astonished because I know you can do it, but I also know for some of you, this was really a stretch. So I congratulate you for hanging on in there. Okay, so this is Lori's and I found this on via Facebook. Now this is super fun. And um, I, I think a lot of that's like Jane Sassaman fabric maybe. But Lori mentioned that there was applique on it and, and she wasn't thrilled with it. Lori, I cannot see where the applique is. And I sat there and played Where's Waldo and I couldn't find it. But in any ways, it is certainly delightful and was a bright, sh shining start to finding quilts this morning. This is Sweet Shelty. Oh, gosh, you guys. You guys are so good. Um... And I like the diet, and I think, I think, she, no, it's the next one. Uh, a lot of you worked really hard on these sets, and I'm going to tell you, when you work really hard on something and you struggle with something, when you conquer it, man, you have got something going on. That is the fun of it. That's the fun of working from scratch, which we will be doing with this quilt, basically, okay, the basket quilt. Let's see. This is Dynome. And I, it's sideways. I'm sorry. I didn't know how to turn it. Maybe this was the one that said she had a hard time with the app, applique, but I, I, I don't know. But I would have never thought of this in a bazillion years. And I do believe it's supposed to be turned clockwise to the right one. But in Rosalie Dace's class yesterday, she talked about when you make a quilt, um, that doesn't have an obvious direction, try turning it different ways because the way you anticipate it may not be the way it's best of all. Good design is good design. And that is why I did not have a problem showing it this way. Bus mama, I wonder what you did for an occupation. <laughs> Look at the 3D effect. Okay, guys, I wouldn't have thought of that. Absolutely Fabulous, fabulous. It's like it's just bouncing off those pages. And then Wawa Steel. I, 
I, I, I'm, I'm speechless. Okay. And, and for me to be speechless is this side short of a miracle. Absolutely gorgeous. And in one of my books, it's way out of print. It was called, um, keep quilting. And it was taking blocks like this and setting it inside 12 inch stars, which is what she's done. And the, the results here are just absolutely smashing. Okay, so oh, I wanna do some other, oh, some other show and tell, okay, and questions. Let's do questions, all right? I am going to go down here. I know, wow, right, Susie? Wow. Okay, so, let me go here. I got this in the mail and I want to show you. I just love it. This is a postcard that was sent to me. Turn it around. Okay. Was sent to me by uh, Carol in, um, I think, Idaho. And the thing I love about this is she just put this postcard that she made out of fabric. It's a little stiff. And then she put the stamp out here and put all the info here and I and I got it. Now it looks like she used a forever stamp um, and what a great idea. I can just see the potential on this for Christmas cards for those that perhaps you maybe owe a gift to, but eh, you know, not really. So look at that, okay. And then another question I got was that uh, there are new quilters in, in this jam, okay? And that makes me very, very happy. And the question was, do you, okay, so here's my finished quilt top. Oh, before I turn this over, look at this fabric. I just love it. It's got the grays, the topes, the dots, the sparkles. Oh, I love it. And I would press this, okay? Whose was this, I wonder? I don't know, it's old stuff, but oh, I love it. You've got your backing, you have your batting, and you have your top. And the question was, do, okay, so this is the top side, then I've got my batting, then I've got my backing. You want it layered out in size like this. You want the top to be smaller than the batting, and then the, yeah, okay, but I thought, oh, am I saying that backwards? You want this smallest, this next, and this here and this is okay so you whether you're hand quilting whether you're machine quilting or whatever um, this is how you do it and I forget I mean this is stuff I just know but because we do have beginners here yay now I had hand embroidered these and then I watched something that Rosalie did yesterday it was through the stitch and post she's from South Africa and I didn't know what else to do I showed it to Cindy Needham it was before I had these on and she said, oh, I know exactly how I'm going to quilt it. I think I'm just going to keep piling up embroidery on it. So I'm very excited about that. And at some point, I'll layer it. And then I'll probably do the kind of quilting that Sujata did on her show. All right, so there's that. Let's talk about the Supreme Slider. I'm getting a lot of questions about it. What the deal is, is it is a... I, sh I think we even had a video on it, okay? It comes in this tube like this, all right? And then it's like it rolls out and this is perfect for machine quilting it's the slippy slider and somebody also asked me that she noted on both my q20 and then my machine i had slippy sliders and the answer is yes i do it does help move things and then what it has it has this stuff that peels off the back okay and <clears throat> This keeps it from sticking to each other when you roll it up. It's got a tackiness. It's not going to leave anything um, residue-y on your table and stuff like that. It's just not. I think we've got about 30 of these left. And um, it's my understanding they're having manufacturing problems. So Kristen managed to score a couple hundred of a smaller one. Not a lot smaller, just a little and they're orange, and that's how you differentiate whether you're getting the larger one or the smaller one. And the smaller, I'm gonna say is like this, like this. I mean, it's really minuscule, the size difference. And I just cannot recommend that enough. Yes, John? And people would go and sign up to be notified. We're not selling until they get here. Oh, okay, so John just said something really important. Is that, where do they do that? 
I'm going to put it up on this. Oh, John's going to put it up. And what we're going to do is we're, we can't take back orders. So we're going to have a place where you, if we sell out of the teal one, um, we will have a place where you can sign up and we'll notify you when they come in. Okay. So then the other thing is, of course, the fabric. And you can use anything you want um, <clears throat> for your fabric, but I happen to fall in love with Edita's stuff. I think this is absolutely beautiful. It's called Sweet 16, and we have, I don't know, we have some left, but when it's out, it's out. I mean, look at this. Okay. Why am I getting cannabis buy thing on my thing? Good grief. Let's take a look at this fabric. Now, this is a monochromatic, um, a monochromatic colorway, mean working in one color family. And what I love about this is that the size and scale of print is different. Now, when you're working in one color family, it is super important that you have lights, mediums and darks. So we have some mediums here. I question this one a little bit because if I go and I play with this one, it becomes dark. Not that much darker, but this is my medium pile right now. All right, I'm sorting. And they come sorted in the bundle too, but just understand that um, that's what you look at. Now this, I love this one to tell you the truth. I mean, I would love yardage of that one. So look at all these different, oh, and then this is my favorite light, the one with the little birdies. Okay, I'm getting these messages and I wish they would stop. So here's this, here's this. Now this is starting to get in, in a gray area. This could go here or here. I think I'm gonna put it here. I think this one ended up in my medium pile this one i didn't know what to do with okay so i set it aside this is when i say it doesn't know if it's light or dark it just doesn't know and i did work it into the quilt in a sashing area so i'm going to set this one just aside and then i'm going to say medium and again i do this no matter what i am working on i i segregated out light medium and dark and then when I say go to make the basket tips and stuff like that, I will say, okay, I'm going to make the background light, all right? And then I'm going to make the tips dark, and then I'll fill in with these, all right? So always sort your fabric by light, medium, dark. If you have a hard time seeing that, what you do is you can take a picture with your cell phone uh, in black and make it black and white and it becomes very obvious what it is. And periodically, again, you'll get fabrics like this that don't know what they really are. All right. And then just put again, put it to the side. Let me shift this camera a little bit. So the, st the strategy of this quilt is this. We are working with multiple sized units. All right. We have two inch, we have four inch, which is the pinwheels, okay? We have six inch baskets. And by the way, um, this basket is not in the book, but I can show you how to make it out of one of the baskets that is in the book. And then we have our 12 inches and eight inches. And they go together like a jigsaw puzzle. Now, somebody commented that um, they thought it was too busy and they didn't like it. That's fine, you know? Make your own quilt. For example, I could see four of these as a medallion with applique in them and an applique around it and then and then figure out the math, you know, and, and do like a, a medallion quilt. I could see that easily. After I've seen what you guys have done with the cave, I have complete confidence that you are going to be just fine, all right? What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show some beginning tricks, and I want you guys to practice some stuff before we actually do on Monday. In fact, let me get up here. In fact, I would go and get some um, scratch fabric and play with it. Okay, the first thing I do, okay, I gotta get organized in my brain. There are a ton of triangles in this quilt, tons, okay? 
and to get half square triangles correctly is a challenge in itself. So I'm going to suggest in this, in this project that we overcut the half square triangles if it's being sewn to another in order to get, like let's look at this top center, see where it says B and C, where those two are being sewn together like that, I would strongly recommend that you overcut it one eighth of an inch. And so what I do is I go into my book, I circle, okay, obviously I'm making an eight inch here. You can see that on the top. I circle it with my disappearing ink pen, my purple one, it'll be gone in a couple days. And then I go and I wrote three, 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 or at the bottom five. And that one I just trimmed squared off. That was G, I believe, which is the base triangle on the bottom right hand corn. I corn <laughs> corner and I just overcut it a little bit and then trimmed it down so because of all the triangles I think we should just be really careful about um, oversizing and cutting down oh let me get rid of this one underneath so before I do this let's talk about this um, okay come on you guys There we go. And I want you to go away. Okay. So in the olden days, what I would do is I would cut my half, I would, I would do it the old fashioned way. I would cut my square at two and seven eighths. Let's just go with that because that's where we're at. I would put my rotary ruler on it. I would find one side of exactly the corner Okay, and then I would pivot up to the other corner, and it's so I'm not fishing like this, all right? Like that, like that, all right? And then I cut. And then I would go to my sewing machine, and I would sew a quarter inch, a quarter inch. You've got a lot of things going on here now. You've got tips that are gonna be eaten up by your sewing machine, perhaps, and you've got a bias here that could stretch, maybe, and so, we've got people who have come up with better ways to do things and that's how I'm going to be do it, doing it. You can do it like this, but I would really recommend you um, at a minimum do what I'm going to show you next. Okay. So what I did before I got my Supreme, my, what's it, what is the thing called? It's called So Steady Grid Ruler. This is what I've been doing for probably the last 20 years, 20, 25 years. Okay. Oh, shoot. What's this one? No, let me get rid of you. Okay. I would draw a line corner to corner with a friction pin. If you're a quilter and you don't have one, I strongly recommend you get that. The other thing I do now is I drop in a little bit of this glue stick on the upper left left corner and the bottom right hand corner and it just kind of helps everything stick together and not shift okay so I do that and then I go and I cut it on the diagonal and then I've avoided all of the biases and all that good stuff it's sewn up and it's beautiful but then I discovered this, and I've been really chatting this up, you guys. This is the grid, uh, uh, the so steady that I have been talking about. Again, we're going to get more in in orange, so don't freak out if this one's gone. One is orange, one is teal, no big deal. And so let's take a look at all these lines here. First of all, let me go to the next one and see if that's going to have what I want. Yes, okay, on the front, I do use a quarter inch foot, okay? And the problem with a quarter inch foot is once you get under it, it's too late. I mean, you've gotta figure out where that quarter inch is before you go into your um, sewing mode. The thing on my burning is I lined up that little line where the um, stiletto is pointing to with the line to the right-hand side of the center line and we probably will be using the center line too at some point. Also, if you have a sewing machine that has over five millimeter wide zigzag opening in the plate, get a single throat plate. It is a single hole throat plate. It, that is a non-negotiable, okay? Non-negotiable. You will just be 
very unhappy if you don't, okay? I don't care what brand it is. So now what happens is, let's see if you can follow me. And if you don't get it, you can go back and watch this again. The very top point, square, corner, is to the outside edge of my quarter inch foot. So <clears throat> that is where the line would have been drawn. Take your eye down and you can see the bottom point I wonder if you can see this. You can see the bottom point is on that line, the, side, the line that's a quarter inch from the right of the center line. And see how it's lined up? Then as I sew, I am looking at that line at the base of that square. That is all that I'm paying attention to and I follow that line and I keep the thing in sync. And I go through. Now you can see even all the way to the end. Okay, see how it shifted a little bit there? I probably didn't use a glue stick, okay, uh, on that corner. I should have used a glue stick to keep it from shifting. It's a little wacky at first. That's in case you didn't get the point. <laughs> so there it is. All that's missing is that corner line or that corner to corner line. All right. And oh, I did overcut this one at three. I'm pretty sure. And then I do the same thing on the other side, or maybe that's a repeat of the first dance. Okay. Well, I'm so organized. I'm telling you. I get the point. <laughs> and then you cut it. All right. <laughs> and I probably would be pressing these to the dark side. And I like to press with my seam with the right side of the fabric looking me in the face so that I don't press a tuck in it. Then I'm going to go and square it up. There are a bunch of really great rulers out there, like there's the lock block ruler, but I just use my little quilter select one. And by using my little quilter select one, I am putting the diagonal line on my ruler on the diagonal seam, all right? And then I've cut it off and made it exactly at two and a half inches so that when it's sewn together, it will finish two inches. All right, so what I want to do this weekend is, this, oh, I wanna talk about thread again. And I am so sorry, you guys, for those of you who have been through all this. Oh, wait, what's the last image, I wonder? Oh, that's that one. Okay, Ruth, may I begin to even stand up to one inch of you? Um, I wanna talk, oh, I forgot to show you this too. What a dope, all right, so. I shouldn't call myself a dope. I wouldn't let my kids do that. Let me go back to my fabric that I chose. And I also went to my solids. I got a couple more lights in and then I went to my solids and added them in. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this was an oddball. This one never cut them. Well, I don't know if it cut the mustard or not. It may have. Um, this was the oddball. This was the hand dye, okay? And it doesn't, it's pretty good there, but it doesn't quite fit in color-wise, and I love it for that. I absolutely love it, okay? Um, so feel free to go to your stash and add in other things. In fact, my friend Robin is doing the blue one and I had some blues I gave her. So it was kind of easier to find blues to add in than the reds because these have a very interesting tone to them. So thread, all right. Your thread will make or break the success of your piecing. In the olden days, and for those of you that are new quilters, I'm talking 40 years ago, when we started, we had this cotton thread that is heavier than, you know, floss. I mean, it was horrible. And it would um, throw off your seams when you went to press things, all right? But I always, and I'm just gonna keep preaching this, I always, 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 and um, use the 80 weight on my bobbin. 
It is a polyester. It is very, very fine. It's perfectly okay to mix threads. It's not an issue. And then on the top, I use a polyester that's cotton coated on the outside. This is for piecing. Okay, let me be clear on this. This is for piecing. You could, some people like the 80 on the bobbin and the 80 on the top. The reason I prefer to have the 60 on top is the, the cotton bat, the cotton outside gives a little friction against the slidiness of the bobbin. So I like to use the little friction of that to help hold the seams together, the stitches. The other thing by putting an 80 in your bobbin, you're gonna have way less lint going on down underneath in the gears because there's not all the cotton in the bobbin to screw things up, okay? So um, when will the, the needle you knew, okay, what needle do I use with that thread set up? Um, when I'm just sewing, I just use a top stitch. I just use like an 80 top stitch and that's it, no big deal. Um, if the thread is back ordered, uh, there, we're doing the best we can. Oh, other really good news, I don't know when it's coming out. You know, it takes like forever, but this 80 weight, we're gonna have nat neutral colors in larger cones. So I'm very excited about that. All right, more questions? John, do you have some in here for us? I like my angel or club angel above the basket. Also, you guys, if you're new to quilting, go get decent pins. You want extra fine glass head pins. And I don't like the extra long ones. I like the regular length ones. And that will become very evident down the road. This covering your bobbin. Oh, does this cover? Yeah, it does cover you where you're, oh, I don't know, because I don't have a drop in. She asked if this covers your bobbin. I don't have a drop in, but it's no big deal because you just peel it back and then put it down. This is, I just don't quite know how to describe this. Now this one's getting grubby, so I've got to go wash it and it will become tacky again. It's just like when we use the, um, the other ones without any markings on it. So uh, this is just kind of like a double, double, double for your buck type thing. Okay, but I, I just, that is my new toy, I will tell you right now. Can you use the 80 weight bobbin and 50 weight on top? You are out of neutral colors and 60. Yeah, you can use, absolutely you can. Um, I, I use, in all, in, I mean, of course I use my own thread, right? But Aurifil makes a beautiful 50 weight. Um, uh, Superior makes a beautiful 50 weight. And so absolutely, it's just the 60 is a little bit thinner. To me, um, the combination, you can't beat it, but whoops, but at a minimum, this is you know what you want for sure. Oh, it does cover it up if you have, um, Oh, okay. Oh, if you it, if you have a drop in, it does cover it up. Okay, Sue, thanks for popping your head in here. It is known as cling in the industry. Okay, Sue Rapp is a personal friend of mine. Comes to my retreat every year from um, Hilton Head. Her husband makes all the components that go in those pool noodles. Remember how we were talking about that? And she sent me all the scientific stuff on what they do and what it's made out of and all that. And it does shed off stuff, but in the end, her husband says he would not really worry about it, okay? If you have a super fine quilt, and I'm just saying, I'm just, you know, this is, a, this is my opinion. This is not fact. This is, I don't want to be like Oprah and the cows or whatever. Uh, sorry, Oprah. Uh, he does recommend that you might wrap it with a tissue paper or something like that, maybe an acid-free tissue paper if you have a quilt that's of extreme value. So yes, those pool noodles are um, great for storage, but understand they do have chemicals in them and you might want to protect your quilt from it, but the chemicals do slough off after a while. So I really appreciate, Sue, you getting that to me. I hope I said that right. If not, you got time to type in right there and correct me. And it would not hurt my feelings in the slightest. So what I would suggest you do this weekend is wash your fabrics if you so wish. I am not freaking out about washing this fabric because it's not going to run like the hand dies. You can see there's a couple. Make yourself some half square triangles. Um, and you can see if you want to make a pinwheel, that's great. But I want you to get used to that so steady mat because we are going to be using that. I mean, I'm going, I'm going to be using that as I teach, and I really want you to play with it. 
it's a little disconcerting when you start. Oh, also talk about um, wicking off something. When you take it out of the, um, yeah, okay, hold on. Judy, yes, it does come in a smaller one. It's orange and we are getting them in. And here's the deal, guys. We have a wish list. We are not taking back orders, but we're getting a ton of the smaller ones in because they're they're having manufacturing issues with these. And I didn't want to hold you up. All right. Same product, just different size. All right. And so, yeah, the angel does go well with the with the basket quilt. So the uh, I washed mine and it didn't run. Okay, Carol. The only thing. Uh, that's what my feeling is, is it's not going to run, but we all have different water sources. If you're going to give this as a gift to somebody, please go wash it before. Did I wash mine? No, but I usually don't unless it's like those hand dyes, which really. Uh, where do you sign up for this and make sure you get the videos? Well, you don't have to, um, you don't have to sign up. You're here, right here, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Yeah, at 10 o'clock Pacific time, I will be doing this. I, I, oh shoot, where's the book? I really strongly suggest, no, not strong. You have to get this. You have to get, oh, here it is. Okay. <clears throat> this is the only required purchase because I won't breach copyrights. It's not mine. Um, okay, here, Kathy said hers ran. So see, that's the thing, you guys. I would, I you can live dangerously if you want. This is what you have to have if you want to do this class. Now, of course, you can sit and watch, and I don't care. But if I'm not going to breach copyright for all the cutting numbers and all that kind of stuff. It is an absolutely fabulous little resource guide. I love it. So will the so, so steady stick to a plastic extension table? Yes. In fact, it's sticking better to my... It, my plastic insert than the top of my horn table, which I thought was kind of interesting. So anything else coming up here? What are you guys gonna do today? I'm gonna go to Trader Joe's, isn't that exciting? Okay, when, when do, yeah, Holly, it's a great book. Didn't you get that at my retreat one year or something? I love that book. John. How much fabric is in the bundle? Okay, in the bundle there is, 26 pieces, thir that would be 13, six and a half yards. And so you're going to have plenty. I, you may run out of white lights, so you might want to just go out and quest on lights a little bit. Okay, I'm just looking at little questions. Ruler. Okay, I love my Quilter Select Ruler. It is, uh, if you have never enjoyed these, at least treat yourself to one. It's six by 12, and it doesn't, it doesn't slip. Uh, I would get the 6x12 first, and then I would get um, the 6x24, and it's all at thequiltshow.com. You might have them throw in a little handle because it doesn't stick. Well, it's kind of like the coating on the back of the, well, it's not the same, but I hold it like this, and so to pick it up and move it makes it really easy. It's not designed to go like this, all right? So one other thing I want to tell you, it's 3.30 here and I'm off to bed. Whoa. Okay. We are all new to this technology and I appreciate your kindness and all that. I was in a Zoom meeting yesterday. Beware if you are in a Zoom meeting or a Zoom class, if you do not turn off your camera, we see everything about you. We see the husband that didn't have his shirt on, and I pray he had pants on behind the wife, who then got mad at him and started yelling at him. <laughs> Unless you turn off your camera, you're on screen. That is my tip and hint for you. So, okay guys, um, I thank you, Barbara. Hey, have a great day, and uh, soldier on. Learn how to use that so steady. Also, if you're a new quilt maker, and I still would do this too, when you get your thread set up, cut two strips at one and a quarter each, sew them together with your quarter inch seam, and then press it and make sure it measures two inches. Every time I start a new project and I'm working with new fabrics and I'm working with new thread, I do that, all right? And a new machine. So good Zoom advice. 
Oh, it was unbelievable. I, it was, I just, I, 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 I it, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, cover your camera. <laughs> On that note, I wasn't going to say anything, but I, I did. You never know. Have a good one, guys.